Adam, we've got no engine. Hi, I'm Adam Trinder, and this is my 1991 Rover Mini, uh, Kawasaki powered and mid-engine rear-wheel drive. If you don't have earplugs in, you're going to get a headache. Um, the engine and the headers are, are literally just on the other side of the firewall. There's some heat shielding there, but you still get heat from the engine, which is nice when it's a cold day. There's no heater and it actually heats up the car quite nicely. But yeah, I mean, the noise can, can be overwhelming if you're not prepared for it. All right, you guys. Uh, I'm not even sure if you, if you can hear me right now, uh, but we are currently driving Adam's mid-engine Kawasaki Ninja ZX-10R powered Rover Mini. Um, this is going to be absolutely insane. Rolling the windows up does really nothing to the sound. There we go. That's 10,000 RPM. Ridiculous. It catches every little rut in the road. You see one millimeter of steering input and the whole car changes direction. But it's like a motorcycle gearbox effectively uh, with all of the stuff that Adam's custom made uh, to fit a car. So it's kind of cool, it's kind of weird, just like Adam Strike looking at the gauge cluster and I mean just looking at a motorcycle gauge cluster in a car is really something else. I mean, this is not something that came off the factory, there is nothing, I repeat, there is nothing that you can buy from the factory at any time period that will feel like this. Maybe like a factory race car or something. So for downshifting, you rev match as you normally would in a car, um, but it is a sequential. So for upshifting, we're at about 7,000 RPM cruising right now. Um, so for upshifting, if you're above like six, 7,000 RPM, you don't need the clutch. So RPM. Honestly, it's it's not uncomfortable at all. I don't know how I don't know how Adams managed to make a car this small and uh, uh, this low to the ground and actually have it stay somewhat comfortable. I mean, these fixed backs are awesome. We've got a full we got a four point harness here. And also, for legality's sake, Adams put your standard seatbelt in. Sorry, it's really weird talking and not being able to hear yourself. <laughs> I can't even hear myself think right now. Oh, but this engine sounds unfucking believable. Unbelievable! You probably remember me from my first video with Roads Untraveled where we had the, uh, the green trike out. So this is my second vehicle now that I've put a motorcycle engine in the back and uh, the driving experience between the two is, is quite different. The, the trike being a lot lighter is 
definitely more surreal. Um, this is more just like a regular car. No reverse or anything like that because it's a motorbike engine, so it's light enough to push it around, but it, uh, it definitely gets up and goes when you want it to. This car is, is a pretty fun driving experience being short wheelbase, rear wheel drive. Uh, the good thing is it doesn't have a ton of torque, so you can actually use all the power and get it to the ground without, without freaking yourself out. I went with the 1991 Mini, uh, partially due to the fact of supply in Canada. There's not a lot of Minis around and also being left-hand drive. This is actually a Japanese import that was already in Canada and it's left-hand drive, which is super rare. air intakes on both sides of the engine bay. Adam's created this entire firewall back here. Uh, now, the way he puts it, everything's legal until you get caught. And I love that. I love that so much. It's a safe car, you know. I've got a full harness on. Um, there's no cage, which is good for a full harness and no helmet. Uh, custom carbon fiber dash. I mean, I'm sitting on the ground, not quite as low as the trike, but this is probably the most insane auditory experience I've ever had in a vehicle with four wheels. Lots of rear end rotation there. You actually get a little bit of body roll, it's kind of nice, gives you a little bit of that feedback. engine which also weighs nothing um, <laughs> is, is really quite something it actually does behave to my surprise like a like a mid-engine car should it really does immediately when you're entering in a corner and you're like downshifting I mean obviously trail braking is a little bit of a stretch on the street but if you come into a corner hot and you let off oh man be careful because snap oversteer might be a bigger concern in this than an MR2, to be honest. <laughs> so, not having a reverse hasn't really been that big an issue for me. Um, obviously, when you're going somewhere and you need to park it, I just plan places where you can just pull through a parking stall and park forward. Um, when you do need to reverse it, I can just kick my foot out the door and push the car back and it's never really been an issue. So figuring out the placement of all the uh, parts to make this car work was a bit of a head scratch. I wanted to retain a full trunk because I like to do events where there are multiple day events, you need to bring like tools and luggage and stuff. So I still have a full trunk, which is a bonus. The gas tank, radiator, a um, bunch of ancillaries are still up in the front here now. So pop the hood, all you see is a gas tank. Um, engine is right behind the front seats. I've got a, a firewall, it's half, aluminum at the bottom, Lexan at the top so I can still see out the back. Um, and 
Being a motorcycle engine, it's super compact, it's super lightweight. You don't even really notice it's there except for the screaming 13,000 RPM red line. So when I came to designing the way the rear end of this car is put together, I actually wanted to retain as many factory mini components as possible. That way, servicing, I can still order all the mini parts and it's, it's a no-brainer, everything is for a mini. So on the back, I put front hubs on the back trailing arms, welded it all together, got it all lined up. So now I'm running disc brakes on the back because I've got the front hubs. Uh, axles are factory mini axles. The Quaif LSD is a factory aftermarket LSD for a mini. I had to machine a housing for it that sits on pillow blocks and it's chain drive to the motor. The rear subframe is a factory mini subframe that's been slightly modified. But apart from that, it, it's, it's all mini stuff. Anything that needs replacing is just going to be a mini part, which is great. I can be resting my hand and I'm in third gear. It's that easy, honestly. Oh, it's got lots of power. So it's about 185 horsepower. Ah, and you're thinking like, Marcus, 185 horsepower, that's like a factory Honda, you know, easier, H22 makes that amount of power, right? But if there was ever an argument uh, for an NA engine, if there was an argue, ever an argument against a turbocharged application, uh, I think Adams honestly solved it here. Honestly, you got power after eight. You have to literally have to be above 8,000 RPM. But then all hell breaks through. So I've been building this car over a course of quite a few years and originally it had a 998 motor in it and then I turbocharged that and I played around with the turbo motor for a while. And then I got the idea of, well, just get rid of the mini engine and put the motorbike engine in. And it, it's been a bit of an ongoing thing because I'm always upgrading it and tweaking it here and there. So it's really, the project hasn't ended. There's still more for this car. With the modifications on this car, I like to go with function and lightweight. I got a buddy gym down in uh, Arizona that does custom carbon fiber work for minis, uh, Rogue 7s, and he's done me a, the carbon hood, carbon boot lid, the rear mounted spoiler. Um, unfortunately, he didn't do my carbon dash though. That I ordered through the UK, so I got a full carbon dashboard, the motorbike gauge clusters in the middle, I got some other ancillary gauges there, a wide band. Uh, just so I know how I'm fueling. Um, billet buttons for the ignition and headlights and all that stuff. And then for engine tuning, I've got the um, power commander. So you can mess around with your fueling and your timing and all that stuff. I've also got the auto tune function on that where it reads the O2 and it keeps changing your parameters as you go. Um, so that's been really good. That I, When I got this, engine this bike was actually a race bike and the ECU had been retuned for racing on higher octane fuels and it was running super rich like even at idle like 10 to 1 on the AFRs so I've leaned it out a bit now it's running about 13 13 to 1 12 to 1 
and it's much better on gas and it rips pretty good. something else this is truly something else it's fast it's you know here's the thing though this engine it doesn't have a lot of torque obviously so you really have to be above like five six thousand rpm all of the time and I'm, i mean those who are riding motorcycles off you know, like obviously right but those in a car like unless you had a turbo on this you have no torque on like below six or seven thousand rpm but when you get past eight and nine thousand rpm the way it picks up, the way the power picks up and just just a swell of power pushing you down the road after that. And then because with the sequential there's no dip in torque, I mean, you're just gone. It's so involving. It's so involving. Just so cool. Thank you so much, Adam, for letting me drive this thing. This is, I will never forget this experience, never craziest car on four wheels I've ever driven. All right, you guys, all right. Oh my God. I'm sweating. It's so hot in here. Okay, you know, I hope you can hear me. I hope you're able to hear me. Um, I hope I provided some kind of decent insight uh, into Adam's insane Rover Mini. So until next time, you guys, smash that like button know what you guys think of this build and whether you would put a motorcycle engine in your mini and make it rear wheel drive uh it's it's badass so subscribe if you haven't already hit me up on instagram at roads and travel you can see kind of what we're shooting on a day-to-day -day basis and some behind the scenes stuff we'll see you next time